Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, this video, a little bit different to usual, it's a bit of a tale of woe. Now, if you've followed uh, the channel uh, at all over the last couple of years, you may be aware that I've had all sorts of issues getting my Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 customised. It's been going on now for a good couple of years, and I only bought the bike three years ago. Anyway, in the last video that I published, uh, I took the bike out for a ride uh, just after I picked it up from the custom house. It turned out there were a few things that were wrong with the bike, and I showed you what those things were and uh, talked about... Um, getting those put right and I also said that I would uh, bring you a video talking to you about exactly how much getting that bike customised had cost me. Well I'm going to do that in this video and I'm going to give you the whole sorry saga of what's been going on since then as well. So uh, if you're interested in uh, my trials and tribulations and I warn you this is not a pretty story, stick around and stay tuned. So just in case you have missed out on the saga so far, let me give you a bit of a summary, a precy of what's happened so far. These are edited highlights, there's all sorts of other shenanigans that have been going on in the background, but these are the key points, okay? So uh, I made a note to make sure I get these right. So first thing is, uh, back in July 2019, I bought uh, my Enfield Interceptor, a beautiful bike. It was in the Baker Express colour, looked absolutely fantastic, I thought. But I did buy that bike with the intention, at some point in the near future, of getting it customised. I just thought the Interceptor made a fantastic base for customisation, and uh, I still think that's the case. So I ran the bike for about six months, I made a few videos about it, really enjoyed it, and uh, during that time I started to investigate professional custom houses. Now I was quite surprised how hard it is to actually to get them to take on work you do. One of the more famous ones I approached said, oh no, we only do triumphs, not interested. Uh, one or two others just never responded, but eventually I did get response from one down the south coast that seemed absolutely excellent, lovely chaps. Uh, we went through detailed specifications, it all sounded great. The only downside was there was a bit of a long lead time, and it was about six to eight months before I'd be able to get the work done. Anyway, one four then to now June 2020. So this is uh, sort of six months or so after I'd originally talked to the custom house. And uh, the guys turned up to pick the bike up. Absolutely brilliant. I was absolutely chuffed. And uh, well, I was in the mindset there's going to be two to three months work to get the bike done. In September 2020, I get a call uh, from the custom house, and I was quite excited when I saw the, the call coming because I thought this is going to be the come and pick your bike up, it's all done. But actually, no, bad news. Unfortunately, this was around the time that COVID was rife. We didn't really know what was going to happen with it. And uh, unfortunately, no work had been done on the bike because uh, COVID had struck the team and they hadn't been able to do anything. And they said, rather than you wait any longer, can we bring the bike back to you uh, and drop it off at no cost? So uh, reluctantly, I understood the situation. Um, reluctantly, I agreed, and they brought the bike back. So I'm now back to square one. This is sort of set. September time 2020 now. So I relayed this story to um, my local Royal Enfield uh, dealer, the dealership that I bought the bike from, uh, and they said, well, why didn't you tell us about this? Because we do custom work, we could do that for you. And in fact, they showed me some pictures of a bike that they customised previously, uh, which they called the Black Knight. And I thought it looked actually pretty good and quite close to what I wanted to do anyway. Uh, and they said, look, leave it with us. We can get this bike done for you. It will cost you about £4,000. That was the agreed price, which was very similar to what the other custom house said, by the way. So I thought that sounded about right. Um, and they said the work would take two to three months to do. So uh, that was my expectation. This is now October 2020. In December, uh, I thought I'd go and check to see how the bike was going on. I had been in touch, by the way, with the, with the guys throughout that period with, with a few emails and so on, but I thought I'd go and have a look at the bike, see how it was doing. Now, I made a little video about that, and uh, here's a bit of a clip about uh, where the bike was at December 2020. Okay, so here we are in the uh, bowels, or depths, let's go with the depths. depths yeah. The depths of uh, the Royal Enfield dealership. Um, so this is my bike, I've never seen it in a state like this before. If I'd realised it was going to be like this, I would have brought me rags and given it a good clean. So anyway, what I haven't told my viewers, is uh, what exactly are we going to be doing to the bike? Well, we are going to be making this a kind of a, a flat track scrambler. Flat track scrambler yeah. hybrid thing. Hybrid, yes. A scram A scram track. A scram I like a scram track. track. We'll go with we'll that. Go with a it's track. a new genre, you heard it here first. Right, right so what are we doing then? We're going to be obviously taking the wheels off, putting some nice knobblies on. Yep. Um, just to give it that aggressive stance. Yep. We're going to be powder coating the wheels. Yep. Gold. Oh. Best colour. Which is uh, which is nice. We're going to powder coat all the engine cases. So this side and the other side, and rocker covers. Brill. Come around this side. They're all yep. going to be all going to be powder coated. Yep. We're going to obviously go the port gaiters, which is pretty standard on on a on a on flat a scram, scram flat track. Scram, scram track. Scram track. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one. Um, we are then going to do a back end delete. What yep. We call. So we are going to chop roughly here. Yep. So you're going to lose your mud guard. All this. Standard here. I'll be glad to see that go. We are going to put a nice short number plate about here with built-in LEDs and indicators and brake lights. Nice, nice. Um, we're going to change the shocks so yep. they're black. Yep. 
We are then going to give you your custom seat. Excellent. Excellent. And your custom paint job, which I'm sure you maybe want to keep secret a little bit. Uh, yeah, we'll wait for the reveal of that. Yeah. But I think probably no surprises, but you're going to like it. Well, I hope so. Yeah. If you don't, then he's in trouble. <laughs> right, going on to the controls, we are going to have a similar handlebar, but it's going to be black. Yep. Um, and we're going to lose all the switch gear Fantastic. and have some nice, tidy... I won't reveal what that's going to be okay, yet, but we'll some wait nice and see. tidy we'll wait switch and see. gear on yep. there. Yep. Um, levers will probably stay with bar ends. We're going to work out at the time if we like the bar ends. Again, it depends on Perfect. where we go. Yep, yep. Um, and what about the exhaust? So the exhaust we are going to produce, we're going to surprise you on those. They're going to be a nice custom. They're going to be black, ceramic coated, short, probably finishing around here. Fantastic. Um, nice and loud, Real. black ceramic coated. Sounds good to me. So, how long until we get to see the finished article? Well, it'll be about two minutes in your case, but yeah, uh, um, how, how many weeks for me to wait? Realistically, two to three weeks. So I came away from there pretty happy, thinking that I had, uh, you know, a matter of weeks. Um, the guy there said two, about two weeks, so I thought, you know, double it, let's say a month, and I should have the bike back. So very excited at that, that, that point. Anyway, a month or so rolled by, and I didn't hear anything, so I started chasing up again to see when I was going to get the bike back. And I kept getting sort of platitudes, saying it was work was being done, it was going to be done, it was going to be done. There were various issues with COVID, suppliers, etc., etc. But generally was told the work was going to be done. And then eventually I got asked for uh, what I thought was the remaining £2,000 to be paid. So I sent another £2,000. So I've now spent £4,000 on the bike, which was the agreed amount uh, to get the work done. Because I forgot to say before the work commenced, uh, I was actually told that, that I need to pay £2,000 up front to buy parts, which is fair enough. So I'm at £4,000 so far. I think that's, that's it. And I'm, I'm thinking, right, I'm ready to pick the bike up and uh, you know, I've paid for it. We're all good to go. How wrong I was. So around this time, I became aware that, in fact, the guys at the bike den, the Royal Enfield dealer, weren't doing the work at all. It was being done by um, a business uh, next door uh, that I had no knowledge of. Uh, a chap called Chris was actually doing the work. He was the, you know, the engineer behind this. Now, I have no issue with the work being subcontracted, but it would have been nice to have been told. And this is where the problems began, because all my conversations were with the bike den. And uh, unbeknownst to me, everything that I relayed to the bike den didn't get relayed to Chris, who was doing the work. This explains why uh, the stuff that was on my original written spec specification didn't get delivered and why some of the stuff that was delivered wasn't what I asked for. Eventually, in October 2021, I was told at last the bike was ready. Now, bear in mind, this is now a year since I'd taken the bike to the bike den to get it done. So it had taken a year to get it to this stage, even though I was told it was going to be two weeks. So I was already feeling a little bit miffed. You could imagine how miffed I was with the next bit of the conversation. Uh, can you repay the remaining balance of, wait for it, £4,588? What? Hang on a minute, I've already paid £4,000. You're asking for another £4,600, bringing the total to £8,600. You could imagine how I felt, not very happy. Anyway, reluctantly, very reluctantly, I transferred the money because I needed to go and collect the bike. So uh, I transferred the money over to the bike den and I went down to pick the bike up. And I made a, a reveal video. Here's a little bit of a clip from that. OK, so here we are, back at the Royal Enfield dealers, the bike den in Watford. Here's Steve again. Remember Steve from... Uh, December it was, wasn't it, last time we met? So, yes. And uh, Carol's here too to help us with the reveal. The bike is under the uh, cover here, so very exciting to see what we've got here. Can you two please take your positions so we can reveal the bike? Oh, somebody's hoovering the car outside, excellent. Look at that. You made that look easy. Ta-da! So I rode the bike home, and on that ride home, I spotted a number of issues, things like the one of the indicators didn't work, the mirrors were loose, uh, and also spotted some things that weren't done to my satisfaction, some of the spec hadn't been followed. And I made a video about that entitled something like, what's wrong with my uh, uh, Enfield Interceptor? And I made a video about that, go and watch that if you want to. Something a number of people mentioned in the comments to that reveal vid was the uh, TMF logo I've got on here. Uh, and, they, and people have said they think that's too big. I agree, uh, that's not something I asked for actually. I wanted TMF stitched on the seat in the back, just in the letters, uh, which I didn't get. So I need to uh, have a chat with the guys up at um, um, the bike den to see if I can get that done. But I'm not too sure about this. I think it looks, I don't know, I'm not sure if it looks all right or whether it looks tacky. So I'm still kind of wondering whether I should do something about the TMF logo on the side panels. Not something that I would have chosen. Now it's there, don't know if I like it or not. Next up, back end of the bike. To my eyes, it looks a little bit too blunt. Uh, I wanted a little uh, mudguard on here, something similar to how they've done on the Speed Twin. I think it would have made the back look just a bit more finished off. Now, it might be that there'll be an issue with the light, I don't know. While we're on that subject, I'm not too sure about this light either. I was hoping for something a little bit smaller, but uh, anyway, there's obviously been uh, a bit of a mismatch of expectation against reality there. I'm going to ask uh, the guys up at the bike then if we can actually get a little mudguard fat stuff to go on there. I just think it would finish the back end off better. 
While we're down here as well and talked about that back end, the number plate, I love the reg, but this number plate, I'm not sure about it being side mounted here. I'm not sure I like the look of that. I would like the, the, the number plate on the back here, uh, underneath, uh, or you know, the mud guard. Again, a bit like I've got on my speed twin. I think the back end of the speed twin looks perfect. And I'd like to try and replicate that on this if I can. So I took the bike straight back to the bike then and said, look, I'm not happy with this. Uh, you haven't followed the specification. There are a few things that uh, need to be done. We had quite a serious meeting uh, where I went through point by point all the things that needed to be put right. Uh, and I also documented this and sent this back to the bike den. So there was absolutely no doubt. And uh, to be fair to the guys at the bike den, they said, we want you to be happy. We're sorry this has happened. We will do everything we can to make sure that things get put right. Now it transpired during that serious meeting that the bike den and uh, Chris who was doing the work had had some sort of a falling out. I don't know the details and frankly I don't really care. But they were no longer really talking at all. So even though there was bad communication before, now there was no communication. And these bits of rectifying, rectification work weren't going to be done by Chris, the guy that originally did the work. In fact, he tried to contact me to see if he could help once he had seen the video. Uh, and I said actually my contractual relationship is with the bike den so I need them to sort it out. So I pursued the fixes with the bike den. I also spotted, and I'll show you the invoice for the work uh, shortly, uh, I also spotted that I've been double charged for some items for VAT. Basically the bike don't have bought some items off the shelf to put on the bike, paid full price on VAT, and then charged me VAT on top of that. And that's how I end up with a massive total. I put this to the bike and they agreed, uh, and they said they owed me around about £600, that they would pay that straight back. I never did see that money, and I'm still pursuing that in the small claims court. So, roll on to now, two days ago, I think it was on uh, Wednesday, which was the 18th, I get a call unexpectedly from Chris, the guy that did the work on the bike, has always been very helpful to me, but I'd personally tried to keep it arm's length because my issue for getting the issues resolved was of course with the bike den. Uh, and he said, Andy, I thought I should call you and let you know what's been going on here. It looks like the bike den have gone into liquidation. Uh, people have come and started taking all the assets out of the building, the shutters are down uh, and the place is being stripped. I noticed your bike was in there, to his surprise. Uh, I've gone and rescued it and I've got it safely in the workshop so that the bailiffs don't remove it. So you can imagine how I felt of this absolutely dumbstruck. The company that was doing the work is in liquidation and some kind fellow next door has actually said, I've rescued the bike, I've got it for you, it's in safe hands, don't worry. And then on top of that, Chris said he felt so bad about what had gone on before, even though it was absolutely nothing to do with him in terms of how I've been treated by the bike den, he said he'd be happy to put anything right that he could uh, at no cost to me in terms of uh, labour, just parts, which is an amazing offer. So thank you very much, Chris, for that. So today I popped down to Watford to go and see Chris, have a look at the bike, see what's, uh, what state it's in, see what remains to be done and try and, to try and agree a way forward with Chris. So uh, here's a little video of uh, me chatting to Chris earlier today. Alright, so I've fired up the trusty gold wing and come down to Watford and uh, here we are, a closed uh, Royal Enfield dealer, apparently gone into liquidation, nightmare. Luckily for me though, as I said, Chris has rescued my bike, Chris's business is here. So thank you very much indeed, number one, for doing the work. When I did the reveal video, you weren't around, unfortunately, for reasons that have now become clear, um, which is a real shame. I mean, lovely job done on the bike. One or two little things still outstanding, though. Absolutely. We've had this bit of uh, strangeness going on next door with yeah. apparently going into liquidation. You've rescued my bike, though, haven't you? Yes, so, uh, and very kindly said that you could uh, help me get the bike finished off. So yeah. thank you for that. Should we go and have a look and see absolutely. what needs to be done? And here she is. So. Uh, the bike had actually been back since, uh, well, basically since I think that was October. There are a few outstanding bits and pieces, and I can see it looks like some work may have been done, yep. not by you by the sounds of it. Yep. Um, so looking at it, the side panels, they were gonna be repainted. The, I had the TMF logo on there, and I actually wanted it to say uh, Enfield Custom 650. Yep. I thought they'd gone off to a paint shop somewhere, but presumably you don't know where I that is. I don't unfortunately know where that is at the moment, but we will retrieve those in due course. So is that something you think we'll be able to retrieve, or do we Absolutely. need to order some new ones? If, or? We have, if we have to order them, they're not stupidly expensive, we can either get those. We can get but does it come with a key on them, so it might be... Yeah, but the barrel lock is changed, so we can... We could, we could sort that yeah. out. Okay, fine. Uh, the other thing was uh, indicators we were going to change. What's going on here? Let's have a look. So there's some alien looking indicators on here, which I'm not sure particularly are in keeping with the bike, no, are they? No. These look like those progressive things, yeah. which I like on certain bikes, but not in this case. Uh -huh. So I, in that case, shall I order up some indicators that I like I and get them is. over to you? Absolutely. And maybe yeah. you can get those yeah. fitted for me. That'd be good. Um, I don't know what's going on with the rear light. I didn't dislike the one that was on there. No, I mean, if that's still around, we could put that back. Yeah. Excellent. 
Yeah. The main the main work that was being done was making a um, a rear mud guard up. That's right. Yeah. And um, again, when I spoke to the guys next door, they said that they were they'd actually ordered one from a speed twin and were modifying that. They made some spaces and stuff. They told okay. me. I don't know if that's if that's around at all. We haven't seen that. Uh, so so we need to come up with some yeah. solution for that. Well, I've discussed it with Grant, and there's various choices that we'll work through with you and yep. do. I know you wanted a slight lip light on the Triumph, but we will modify this rear frame to fit because at the moment it's straight. You may want this to come up very slightly to accommodate the lights but and the mud guards. Will that upset the fit of the seat though? Um, shouldn't do. We can also we can change that. We can change the base of the seat. Perfect. All right. So, so we can finesse that between yeah, you and me. Absolutely. We'll I mean, I mean, one of the issues that we have through the build of the bike, it turns out, I never realised a third party, Chris, as it turns out, was actually doing the work, and hence. I was talking to one person who never spoke to Chris, so there's a complete breakdown of communication. So that explains why stuff was done that I didn't necessarily ask for, etc. Um, all right, so we'll uh, now we're in touch. We'll yep. we'll get that sorted then. Yep. Uh, what else is there? I think is that pretty much it. We had. I think you had an issue with the front indicator. Oh yeah, we want we're going to replace those as well. So I'll just I'll probably buy the same sort as I get to the back. Yep. It looks like we've gained some bar end ones. Yep. Do they work? Do we know? I don't know as yet. Yes, they are wired. Oh, well, there we go. So they're not. The rear, the rear aren't. Actually, they don't look that terrible, do they? Uh, maybe we'll leave those on there then. Do you think I should get indicators on the front as well and have those as extras, or what do we got? So where do the indicators go? The indicators, the indicators are wired through here, and then we brought the old indicators out from. All this, right, um, but there's no there's no bracket there, so maybe we just right. leave those for the front. Yeah, yeah. We we'll just leave them then. I think they look okay, yeah, don't they? Nice. Well, I think the front looks okay, actually, doesn't it? Looking yes. at it, I don't think it's um, as long as there are like no blanking bits where the old indicators were, and that's no. so that's fine. No. Side cases we talked about. Um, we'll see what we can do about those, and then yeah, I think that's pretty much it, isn't it? So it's the back end that really it's is the, the main the thing is the back end to make sure you're happy with that, and then relocating the number plate that was to go on there. Yeah, yeah. because we weren't happy with the side number plate. I think it just doesn't look aesthetically correct. No, no. no. Have something out here. Yeah, that would be perfect. We will work that out with you. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much for stepping in and, and offering to do the work for me. That's very kind of you. No um, we'll keep your praise with how it goes. So there we have it, folks. That's the story of my Enfield so far. I still don't have it back here in the garage. It's cost me £8,588 so far, uh, plus the cost of the bike, which is about 6200 So add those together, we're up to about fifteen grand now for this custom Enfield. Now, I'm going to end up with a very expensive, cheap bike, although, don't get me wrong, I'm going to love the finished article. I mean, it's, it's going to look beautiful when it's done. So I am looking forward to getting it back. A huge thanks to Chris again for stepping in to help me out to get the work done. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been the whole thing, as you can imagine, has been a bit of a nightmare. I did say I'll give you a breakdown of the cost. So here's a little look at the invoice as well. Uh, I'll put it on the screen so you can see the individual items. Now I looked up one or two of these items myself on the internet just to see uh, what was going on with them and uh, I found lots of these things cheaper than I was charged. So I think there's been a little bit of a markup. Plus of course you've got that double VAT thing that I talked about before and I am pursuing that in a small claims court. I'm going to try and get my money back on that bit at least. And out of interest I also asked uh, Chris how much he had charged me for labour or rather how much he had charged the bike down for labour. They charged him 1300 quid. You can see here how much much uh, the bike then charged me for labour, so that's all markup. So there you go, basically, I feel like I've been royally shafted by the guys at the bike den. I don't bear them personally any malice. I mean, I don't know what the backstory is, what the situation is there. Uh, Steve, the guy I used to deal with, very nice fellow, but and obviously he's come upon hard times and he clearly wasn't much of a businessman. I feel I've been completely shafted by him. Um, but, I, you know, I hope he gets his life sorted out. But uh, nightmare, still haven't got the bike back. I'm out of pocket. Feeling pretty depressed about the whole thing, as you can imagine. But uh, I wanted to bring you up to date because so many people have asked me questions about where's the Royal Enfield, what's going on with it, how much does it cost you, and so on. So there we are, completely on the table. That's what's going on. I will, of course, keep you appraised as uh, efforts proceed. I'm hopeful that we're going to get the bike sorted. If we can get the parts and stuff that we need, should be uh, ready, I hope, uh, around about April time. So as I say, I'll keep you appraised. Anyway, that's it for this time. I uh, hope you enjoyed that somewhat glum video, but I thought you deserved uh, an update. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you again uh, next time. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.